Happy New Year and welcome to the January edition of NTV and greetings from the powerhouse gym at the South Service Center. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Henry Yates. You're probably wondering why we're here and why we're dressed this way. Well, like many of you, we're committed to getting into better shape in the new year. So we're here to show you this City Light resource. There's also a gym at the North Service Center, and you, like us, can use either facility to fulfill what I bet is one of your most important New Year's resolutions, keep in shape. The South Service Center gym began as a place to train and test line worker apprentices, but since has expanded, so all employees may work towards their fitness goals. This gym and the one at the North Service Center are open before and after work and during lunch times and have staff on hand to help you use the equipment properly. Daily there's somebody here that knows all the safety rules and knows what to do if you're hurt uh, it, and we haven't had much problem with that and we've been real grateful for that because we do have training. Regular workouts help employees prevent injuries and gain strength. The gyms are just one part of the Health Power Program to help us all achieve a better quality of work life. Kevin Mosley Kaler is the Health Power Coordinator. Um, I think it's a, it's a great way to improve the uh, quality of work life to have facilities such as these and I think that that these programs can be used as a mechanism for the employer to um, demonstrate its commitment to employee safety, health, and well-being. So I think it's a real win-win situation for both the employees who have the convenience of the facilities and for the employer. If you'd like to work out, here are the hours. For more information, call Kevin at 684-3024. In addition to getting ourselves in shape, many of us are wondering how this winter is shaping up for the utility. There's lots of snow around the Cascades. Ski operators and winter enthusiasts are happier than they've been for several years. And while local conditions couldn't be called an Arctic Express, the Seattle area snow alerts and cold days have made it a little more difficult to cope with winter. With so much snow in the Cascades, in the Skagit, and at Boundary, what does that mean for the utility? Are conditions back to normal after last year's drought? Snowpack looks good. And one of my forecasts from the snowpack is close to normal. Unfortunately, 90% of normal precipitation, which caused the buildup in snowpack, didn't give us the same runoff in the rivers that we would expect in the fall. So I got less than normal precipitation, but about normal snowpack, which means that the runoff had to be below normal to keep a water balance. The circumstance we're in now is to acquire power, take storage we have someplace else, or buy power to keep Ross from going empty. Mm -hmm. So in other words, instead of putting the water out of Ross or through the turbines and producing power, we buy it from someplace else. Mm -hmm. So we can then back off on the generation in Ross hold the water in the reservoir for future use. Since the reservoirs don't fill until the snow melts, conditions could reach a critically low point in May. City Light purchases power from Bonneville and other sources to avoid draining the reservoir, but the entire region's reservoirs are just as low. Jay says the first snow survey is set for February 1st, so we'll keep everyone informed as to the status of the snowpack and what that means to us. While resource conditions for the year ahead are still being determined, one thing that's clear is that there are some major changes occurring in the entire utility industry. Right, Henry. And recently, Larry Hobart of the American Public Power Association visited City Light to share some of those changes. As executive director of the American Public Power Association, Hobart spoke to City Light management about how the new Federal Energy Policy Act could affect us and the utility industry nationwide. Seattle City Light is a local public power system, but many of the things that the city Seattle Light staff is able to do are going to be determined by national decisions. What happens in your city could well be decided by your country. And I've come here today to talk a little bit about the national energy strategy legislation and the new Clinton administration and try and assess what its implications are for Seattle City Light. Whatever changes are coming, customer service is sure to remain an essential utility priority. And you know, when we think of customer service, we usually think of reaching out to our ratepayers. 
but there's something new here at the service centers. The Employee Services Division is providing a new internal customer service, reaching out to employees at the service centers. Each week, someone from Personnel Services and the EEO office visit North and South to keep in touch with employees at each site. Employees come to us and ask questions and sometimes they bring up problems and issues that we need to address that we end up spending more time on after we leave. And um, generally it's been a good idea. I think that more employees need to know about it because mostly we get the people that are right around in the area where we're meeting. So we would like to let employees know that we are there every week, both EEO and personnel. Topics for personnel include selection and hiring policy, and for EEO, workplace environment, discrimination, harassment, or any issues that may be of interest to employees here. Changes in our field happen quickly, but it's nice to know there are some traditions we can depend on. And one of those traditions is our own employee organization, better known as CLIA. CLIA began in 1937 and is 100% employee funded. CLIA held its elections for officers for 1993, and Kari Lundquist is the new president. She works here at the South Service Center. The Skagit vice president is Marilee Wright. The central vice president is Carolyn Moore. North Service Center, Leslie Ward. And South Service Center is Angela Mendolia. Our treasurer is Lydia Romero. And our new secretary is Rose Marie Anderson. And the new editor of the CLIA News is Sue Peterson. Every year, CLIA sponsors several major activities. Well, CLIA is a real good morale booster. It's a good way to get to know your fellow employees. It's a great way to interact with people from other divisions that you wouldn't normally interact with. Um, it's a great way to break the ice between people. You can meet on an uh, informal, casual basis. And uh, it's just a heck of a lot of fun. Volunteers from throughout the utility coordinate CLIA activities. There are currently 16 reps. If you'd like to volunteer, call Kari here at the South Service Center. Well, we're ready to turn our attention back to exercising at the Powerhouse Gym. And remember, you can send us your questions, comments, or story ideas to NTV, room 809, Seattle City Light Building, or give us a call at 684-3112. Well, we'll see you next month. For NTV, I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Henry Yates. Good luck with those New Year's resolutions, and we'll see you next month.